All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful Saturday morning, and I wanted to go ahead and just make sure we could talk about some of these things we're supposed to know for dun 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 direct variation. All right, look, a direct variation is another kind of word for a proportion. All right, or pretty much a proportional relationship. We started looking at that in seventh grade, okay? A lot of seventh grade skills uh, had to deal with proportional relationships, okay? Well, we're going to see that in action with these types of things. All right. Well, let's see. This problem says, name the constant of variation for each equation. Then determine the slope of the line that passes through each pair of points. All right. Let me just go ahead. Okay. I actually already have it snipped. That's good. That's good. I got my workspace right here. Let me go ahead and paste this. Let's go ahead and maybe zoom in a little bit. All right, all right, all right. So check this out, check this out. We got ourselves this problem here, okay? We all should be able to identify the equation, okay? There is an equation already in this problem. Let me go ahead and write this down. The equation is y equals one-third x. I hope you could see it. It's right there. You know what? I'll even highlight it right here. Boom. We got to all be able to see it. Okay. So you got to understand that this is proportional. All right. We got to understand that. Why is this proportional? Some of you already know, and that'd be amazing. But if you don't know, it's because it goes through the origin. What do you mean by the origin, Mr. Legado? I mean this point right there. Okay. You see that point? That's the origin. All right. That's the origin. Okay, so a proportional relationship has to pass through the origin. All right. So in this problem here, if we start making a table, notice a lot of these graphs, we turn them into tables. Okay. Our first point in the table will be zero, zero because a proportional relationship passes through the origin. Okay. Now, um, we also have another point given to us. You know, if you could look at the graph, sometimes they don't give us the actual point, but you could even see it because from the origin, we would count three to the right and then one up and we would end up at three comma one. OK, notice the three is the first number. So it goes into the X value and the Y is the second number. It goes into the Y value. They're separated by a comma. OK, now here's the deal. All right. Sometimes we don't know what these things mean. But let's make sure we know what they mean. All right. So I'm going to be honest. We've already been looking at this equation, but this equation is really a form of a linear equation. Notice I'm zooming in here. What do you mean by linear equation? I mean that. I mean that right there, that black line that says linear equations. It's the third black line on your formula chart. All right. And we've already been looking at a form. A very, very important form that we'll be staring at a lot, a lot, a lot. We've already been looking at slope-intercept form. And there's a very, very, very important thing about slope-intercept form. The Y, and I'll put Y in, per, in little quotations, is isolated. Okay? The Y is isolated. As you can see, the Y is by itself. That's how you know it's in slope-intercept form. That's a great identifier. So what is slope-intercept form? Well, slope-intercept form is a way that you can see certain things from an equation, okay? It's called slope-intercept form because you see this letter right here? Let me go ahead and highlight it. Boom. You see that right there, the letter M? It's also over here. It's right there. And guess what that letter M stands for? It stands for the slope of a line, all right? So when we are looking at a formula chart, the letter M represents the slope, all right? The slope is the letter M right there, okay? That's what it is. All right, we'll get into the slope formula pretty soon. Actually, we're, you know some of you may already know the slope formula, but this is the slope formula. We're going to get into it pretty soon. But there's one more thing I want to talk about here. There is another little letter at the end of the equation. And you're going to notice that we didn't see this in our equation. 
but I need to make sure we understand what this is. The B represents something called the y-intercept, okay? That's just the vocabulary, the y-intercept, okay? I'll show you what it means right now. But the B represents something called the y-intercept. If we go back to the problem here, let me go ahead and you know what? Before we go back into the problem, I want to snip this because we're going to be using this. We're going to be using this a lot. All right. So let me snip that. Let me go ahead and paste this down here. Let me go ahead and make this a little smaller so I could fit this here. Okay, maybe that's a little too small. <laughs> but there you go. I'll just put it right there. Okay, because I want you to see that this is pretty much kind of already giving us some stuff here. All right, check it out. In our equation, we had y equals 2, and I'm going to highlight it here, 1 third x. You could probably already guess what the slope's going to be just by looking at it. The slope is 1 third. All right, just by looking at it. Mr. Delgado. There's no plus B. I don't see a plus B there. And I would have to say you're completely correct. There is not a plus anything here. And there's reason why. There's nothing there. And in mathematics, a very special number means nothing. And guess what that number means or what it is? It's the number zero. All right. The zero is technically there in the equation, but since this passes through the origin, the origin means that the y is zero. So the y-intercept is zero in this problem. And when you're adding zero, you don't necessarily need to include it in the equation. So there you go. Just by looking at the equation, you should be able to see the slope and the y-intercept. In this problem, the slope, and you know what? Let me use a little bit of a different color because that color is a little bit hard to see. But uh, there you go. The slope is one-third the y-intercept is zero. And remember... It's all because this is proportional, all right? Let's take a look at another problem here. Let's just take a look at another one, all right? Let's take a look at number two. Number two, I like this bad boy right here. Okay, here's the deal with number two. I'm going to already tell you something. Number two looks a little different than number one. If you take a look at number one, and I'm going to even write it here, it looks like, it looks like if you take a look at it, it looks like if you're reading from left to right, the line is going up okay you kind of see it it looks like it's going up it does it looks like it's going up take a look at it it's it's like it's increasing if you look at it from left to right there's something very different about the problem i just snipped let's take a look at the workspace okay okay it was right here i should have just used this one <laughs> uh, it's going up that's what i'm saying this is going up because if you read it from left to right, you're reading it like a book. From left to right, what's happening to my line? The line is increasing, okay? It's going up, all right? Let's take a look at this next problem real quick, okay? All right, whoop. Let me put it over here. Let me put it down here, and let me make it a little bit bigger. There you go, so we can zoom in on it. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this and bring it on down. Okay, this is my slope-intercept form, okay? We're looking at it. It gave us an equation, and notice the equation, the y is isolated. So we're going to go ahead and analyze it, all right? Remember, we got to know these things. If we could use these things in real life, if we could just look at a problem and identify things, this class is super-duper easy, okay? So notice, my equation is y equals negative 3 over 2x, Okay? Just by looking at it, there's no y-intercept. There's not a plus b. There's nothing there. So I hope you're able to see that in this problem, the y-intercept is zero. It's zero because it passes through the origin. We got to remember it. Remember, and you can even see it right there. Boom. It passes through the origin. Zero, zero. Okay? Now... 
the slope is given to us in this problem. The slope, I hope you could see it, is right here. Negative three halves. Negative three halves, all right? I hope you could tell just by looking at our graph here. You could see the negative. As you could see from left to right, if we were looking at this, you could kind of see our little equation going down. It's kind of going down. If it's going down, it's decreasing, all right? Decreasing negative correlation or a negative slope. That's why my slope is negative. I hope you see that right there, okay? All right, Mr. Delgado. Sometimes we got to make sure we understand how to look at a slope on a graph. And I've said this before. I'm going to say this again. The slope is also known as the rise over the run, okay? Notice what I did here. There was a negative in the front. I just basically put the negative with the negative three, okay? That's what I just did. It doesn't really, you know, that's just how it is, okay? So don't freak out that now it was in the front and I just put it with the negative three. It means the same thing. But I also want to show you this rise and run. I want to show you what it means on a graph because we have to know what it means, okay? We just have to know what it means. If we don't know what it means, we're going to have a bad time. So let's take a look at this. Let me also make this a little bit thicker right there. There you go. Okay, let's take a look at my graph. Let's say I were to start at the origin right there, all right? So, you know what? Let me use a different color here. Let me use that yellow again. Let's say we were to start at that origin right here, okay? This negative 3 right here, this rise of negative 3 means instead of going up, since it has a negative, we'll be going down. 1, 2, 3. I hope you see I went down 3. I went down 3. You could see it. The run of 2, notice that it's a positive 2, means I'm going to move to the positive direction. But since it's the run, we're going to move with the x axis. Notice I'm going to move right. One, two, right there. And notice it ends up on the graph. We have this run of two. We had the rise of negative three, and it continues on the same line because that's what this means, the slope. The slope means that we're going to have the same pattern continue over time. You could see it even from up here. If we started here, we would have had to go down one, two, three. And then we would have to count two to the right. All right? That's why the rise is negative three, and that's why the run is two. We got to be able to understand that, okay? All right, let's take a look at another problem here real quick. And I'm sorry that I went over this so much, but we got to make sure we can do these types of problems, all right? So let's take a look. I wanted to take a look at number five. Number five. Number five is a great problem. As you can see, it says we need to graph each equation, all right? So I just wanted to show you how you would be able to graph this. It's not going to be crazy hard, but just in case you see something like this, all right? Go ahead and, oh, wait, cancel. Oh, no. I lost the picture. Ugh, Mr. Delgado, what did you do? <laughs> I'm just joking. It is what it is. Sometimes we make mistakes. Okay. And it's, you know, we all make mistakes. As you can see, Mr. Delgado just made one right now. <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good because mistakes are things that we overcome, right? <laughs> right. Nothing's wrong with a mistake every now and then. Any case, we have ourselves this problem here. We have a little graph given to us and we have an equation. Just by looking at the equation, you should be able to tell me the slope. Just by looking at it. And I hope you got it in your mind. Because the slope is right here. Yeah, it's right there. Remember, the slope is the number or value touching the letter X. It's the coefficient, okay? Really, the slope is the letter M. It will be negative, negative 3 over 4 would be the slope. OK, or negative three over four, if you want to have the negative pulled out like it is in the equation. That's what it means. OK, just by looking at it, you should be able to tell the y intercept is zero. OK, it goes through the origin. All right. 
So now that we know it goes through the origin, check it out. We could go ahead and start creating our little table here, all right? We got a little zero, zero. That's our first point because we know it goes through the origin, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and start plotting it. I'm going to start plotting it because at the end of the day, we got to all make sure we could do it, okay? Let me go ahead and use this right here. Let's see. It's zero, zero, so we'll go ahead and boom right there. Can you guys see? Yeah, it's not that bad. Okay, so zero, zero. Now, here's why the slope's pretty cool. Here's why the slope's pretty cool. I already kind of said this. The slope represents the rise over the run, okay? Now, since it's negative three, the rise, if I had my little pen here and I know it started at zero, the negative three means I'm going to go down one, two, three. I went down three, all right? The four, positive four for the run means I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And I end up right there. Okay, I end up right there. Now I have my next point for this graph right here. So if we have this, we have, let's see, we're going to, how do I get to this point right here? Well, let's count from the origin. We count one, two, three, four to the right. So my X is going to be four and I counted three down. So my Y is going to be negative three. And there you go. I have myself my first point. Why is that important? Because now that I have my first point, I could attempt. <laughs> Look, my line's not going to be perfect here. It's not going to be perfect, but I guess I'll try. <laughs> Don't laugh at me if it's so horrible. But in any case, now we could try to connect the points, right? And then, of course, if we wanted to, we would go backwards, right? We could just kind of connect them right here. Look something like that, right? Of course, if I had a little ruler, it would probably be a lot easier. But there you go. We have ourselves a little graph, okay? Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Because honestly, we live in an age of technology, right? <laughs> so why not take a look at number six, okay? Look, we don't always have to do that. All right. There's some of the cool things. Once you have an equation, oh, man, you could do some really cool things. OK, what do you mean, Mr. Legado? Well, let's look. Wait, wait. Let's just be able to identify some stuff. We got an equation. I hope you could already see that this is proportional. Right. It's a direct variation. All right. We have our slope. Is two over five. And the Y intercept. Is zero okay you got to be able to just see it and identify it but i'm gonna be completely honest with y'all in my classroom you are also allowed to use a calculator here let's see if i could actually put both on the screen and make it look kind of decent okay and that doesn't look too good but maybe i could scroll to the side okay a little bit better all right maybe not the best in the world let me zoom out here boom might be a little bit better okay so I wanted to just show you in my class, you could actually use a calculator here, okay? So notice I have myself my TI. It's on the screen, okay? All right. I pushed home screen because, you know, we're going to start a new problem. Notice they give us an equation, so we could use our, you know, graphing calculator here. And so uh, first thing I would do, you could always move up and down, but, but I would actually just hit this button right here. That's a scratch pad button. Hopefully you saw me tap that little button right here. Boom. And, you know, my little cursor is on it right there. I hope you can see it. And um, that scratch pad button, if you keep pressing it, you toggle between the calculate page and the graphing page. All right, Mr. Ligado. I'm on the graphing page, but notice at the top there's not a bar. There's not a bar, Mr. Ligado. I can't put my, uh, you know, graph in. Well, you hit the button tab. On the graphing calculator, you know, that we use in school, we hit the button tab and it opens up. Okay, opens up. Now, the only thing I want to say is that if we look at F1 right here, F1, it means the exact same thing as Y. Okay, so when we see the equal sign right here, it's the exact same as this equal sign. So we don't have to write Y equals. Okay, we don't have to put that. But here's what we're going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, it's a fraction. So to make a fraction on the calculator, you have to hit the control button and then the divide symbol. And now we've created a fraction bar, okay? That's how you have to do it, okay? Look, there's another way we could do it. I believe that if you hit the 
tool symbol, you could find it, you know, down here. Look, there's a lot of different tools we could see. I actually think it's also, um, I think it's right here. See, I don't even know where it is, but I do know <laughs> for a fact, I think it's like one of these buttons should have like a, like there's a lot of crazy things this calculator. There you go. There you go. This button right here next to the little book under delete. If you press it, you can see there's like a fraction. There's actually a lot of different tools we could use here. Okay. So we could put the fraction from there also. Okay. So you would have to hit this button button right here next to the book. Okay, Mr. Nagato, I got in this menu. I don't want to touch anything. Yeah, you could hit escape and you could get out of it. But anyways, let's go ahead and type in our number. Okay, so we have two over five. All right. I'm going to hit to the right because notice how the X is on the right side of it. You always want to you always want to type it in correctly because if you don't, you might mess up. We hit enter and notice how it graphs for us. OK, that graph looks really amazing. But the graphing on the calculator is not the same as graphing it on a, on a sheet of paper. But the good thing about our calculator is that you could go ahead and look at the table that it creates. What do you mean, Mr. Ligado? This is what I mean. Go to menu. Once you go to menu, you should see all these different options. But I was talking about a table, and notice what we see at number seven. Oh, lucky number seven. Table, table time. Let's go ahead and hit enter, and then we would hit script screen table. And you could actually see a table created from all the possible values of this graph. As you can see, I already moved up, and there's that special origin right there we could even use that to help us out we could go ahead and create our own table and go ahead and put zero zero for sure for sure but some of these other values like one goes with 0 0.4 i know a lot of us are pretty you know we don't like fractional pieces of whole numbers we don't like these pieces of numbers so maybe it's best of, for us to look for a value which just has whole numbers. And we see one right here. I hope you see one. Five goes with two. You know, we could even continue maybe backwards. Notice how I also see negative five goes with negative two. All right. This is super important for us. Notice I'm going to go ahead and just leave the calculator alone for a bit. And let me go ahead and go back to my graphing over here notice with that information we can go ahead and you know graph this so let's do it zero zero we see it right there five goes with two we're looking at this one five goes with two well five you start at zero count five to the right it's a positive one two three four five two up because the y is a positive two boom that's our next point Two points is enough to draw a line. You get a little ruler. Sometimes, if we were in class, I would even say grab the calculator edge. It's a straight edge, and you just draw a little line, and it's you know, really good. We have another point. I actually graphed this other one. We have space for this other one, negative 5, negative 2. So negative 5 would not be going to the right. We'd be going to the left because you know we're in the negative direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And instead of going up 2, we would go down 2. 1, 2, down. Boom. We connect them. Let me use a different color to connect them just in case it looks like complete garbage. <laughs> well, it's not terrible, but it could have been better. But that's kind of what our line would look like. Notice our graph is going up. And I know we can't really see it too well on mine <laughs> because my line looks terrible. But we could even see our rise and run. We could see it. We could see the rise over the run. From the origin, I would have to go up one two i had to go up positive two my rise and then i would have to go one two three four five to the right because my run is five okay sorry sorry i was supposed to say run okay now it's very hard to see but but point being is that this is what it all is and we all need to be able to do this okay all right let's take a look at this one last problem i wanted to really check a look at okay let's take a look at something like number eight or number seven all right number seven but notice what it says before we even look at it suppose y varies directly as x i'm going to be honest with you anytime you read that in a problem you better be thinking proportional it goes through the origin that's what you better be thinking 
And you're going to end up with a happy face like this guy. Yeah, with the cool hair. Yeah, buddy. You're going to be ending up with a cool, happy face. Yeah, a little thumbs up. Sorry, I saw the origin look like a face. I was like, <laughs> anyways, whatever. Point being is that we need to make sure we write an equation and we need to solve it. All right. Let's take a look at number seven. All right. Let me go ahead and grab the information here. All right. And I'm, I'm going to grab what really mattered here. All right. This part really mattered. Okay, let me scroll down just a teensy weensy little bit right here. That part mattered. Suppose y varies directly as x. In your brain, you should be thinking proportional. Why is that important, Mr. Legado? Well, with that information, we can go ahead and start making tables here. Check it out. Check it out. Boom, boom. Got my x, got my y. All right. If it's proportional, we know it goes through 0, comma, 0. All right. Why else is this important? If you take a look at what they gave us, if y equals negative 8, well, if my y is negative 8, check it out. Under my y, I'm going to put the negative 8. When x equals to negative 2, notice how they sneakily gave us another point. And now we could go ahead and figure out some important information for this problem. We could actually use the, let me bust it out. Slope of a line formula. Slope of a line formula. Remember how I told you this slope of a line was super important? Well, we're going to use it right now. We're going to use it right meow. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> well, let's use that slope of a line. Let me go ahead and copy this right there. We're going to be using it and making sure we know how to use this slope of a line formula. All right, all right. Let me go ahead and paste it right here. This is my formula for a slope of a line. Okay, this is my formula right here. Slope of a line right here. That's my slope formula. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. That's my slope of a line formula. We all need to know how to do this, all right? So check this out. Once you have a table with at least two coordinates or two points, you got to label them. Boom, X1. Why is that X1, Mr. Delgado? Because that's the first number in the x column. It's as simple as that, x1. And that one, that means this one's going to be x2. Simple as that. That's all it is. That's all it is. So the other side, notice now we're on the y column. The first number in my y column is 0. But it's not the one on the left. It's the one on the right. What about my second y? Well, my y2 would be negative 8. All right, that's as simple as that. It's a, that's all it is. We create a table with at least two points. You label them, and now you could do your slope. So let's do it. So well, this is what I would do. Okay, we started with the slope formula. We see it on the very bottom right hand corner y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now let's substitute. y2 is going to be negative 8 minus my y1 is going to be 0 over negative 2, my x2 is negative 2, minus my x1 is 0, all right? Some of us, you know, if you can do this in your head and stuff, that's great. You could go ahead and maybe see, hey, we have a negative 8 over negative 2, all right? Some of you may automatically change this to 8 over 2 because the double negative creates positive. And some of us may be able to change this into a slope of 4 using mental math. But if not, the good thing is you could always use your calculator. This is what I mean. So I got my calculator over here. Okay, let me go ahead and show you what's up. So I got my calculator still on the screen. I still have my problem from the previous problem we used my calculator for. Here is how we clear it all. I'm going to go ahead and hit dock. I'm going to go ahead and hit down, down. I'm going to keep going down, down. And notice at the very bottom of it, there's a thing that says clear scratch pad. It's the letter B. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And now it clears both pages for my next problem. All right. So we got to know our calculator really well also. All right. So anyways, we got ourselves this problem over here. Of course, I already did it. I did it using mental math. I'm Mr. Legalo. I've been a teacher for 13 years. That's what I do. But you are also an individual who's allowed to use a calculator. And even myself, sometimes when I get tired, especially during a long test or just a long day of teaching, 
you know, sometimes I want to use my computational tools. And that's what I want to show you. Once you have the slope formula with the correct numbers substituted, you could just use your calculator and type all the numbers in. For example, control divide creates my fraction bar. Notice my number is negative 8 minus 0. Then I'm going to put the little arrow down. You know, I'm going to go down to my denominator. Negative 2 minus 0. And guess what? I got the same exact answer for my slope as I did over here when I used my mental math. Okay? So, you know, I just want to make sure that we could see that. All right. Why is that important, Mr. Delgado? Well, now we got our equation. And I hope you're able to see that. My equation should be y equals. You know what? Let me use a different color here. My equation should be y equals 4x plus 0. Remember, we're using y equals mx plus b form. y equals mx plus b form. The m represents the slope. The b represents the intercept. This goes through the origin. It goes through the 0. And it is a slope of 4. All right. Why do we need this, Mr. Legado? Well, look, there's a couple of different ways you could do this problem now. We haven't even solved it, but we've done so much work. And what we've done is figured out the equation. We figured out basically our key to this mystery we don't know. All right? Notice how I'm actually going to delete that plus zero at the end. We don't even need it, right? Check it out. My equation really is y equals 4x. So if you look carefully, I hope you're able to tell our next step. Since we have the equation of y equals 4x, we're going to substitute my y equals 32. Look at what I'm going to do. 32 equals to 4x. And to solve for x, well, let's just do it. We're going to have to divide both sides by 4. All right, what's 32 divided by 4? Let me bust out my calculator. 32 divided by 4 is 8. So, guess what? 8 equals to x. And we have our next point, if we wanted it. But our correct answer for this problem would be x equals to 8, because that was the question. All right? But we have another value for our points. If we wanted it, we would know that 8 goes with 32, and so forth. Because, you know, that's what it's pretty much saying here. All right? We need to be able to do these problems. So if they give us some information, we got to be able to do these problems, okay? So hopefully we got to do a lot of good review, got to see the calculator in action, and just got to see overall a lot of good problems over the intro to slope-intercept form, all right? Hopefully this helps out, and I hope you guys have a great day, all right? Let me go ahead and stop recording. Have a good one.